you've caught me at a very exciting moment. I need fabric, and I'm going to buy some, but not online. No, no, no. Today, I am going to do something I have not done in over a year. It's not raining, it's not snowing, and I'm all hopped up on Moderna. So let's go to the fabric store. So let's go to the fabric store. Okay, hold on, Mr. Eagerpants. I know you have cabin fever, but you're going to blow the grocery money on Harris Tweed. Sit down and make a plan. The first thing on my list is from this book, The Gentleman's Wardrobe by Vanessa Munsey. The book is full of patterns for the kind of stuff I like to wear, and the detailed instructions are great for a novice like me. I have my eye on this waistcoat because I wear a lot of them. However, I do not play the banjo. I've made the dressing gown from this book and loved it. In fact, I wore it out. And uh, when I wear it, of course, I look exactly like this model. <sighs> anyway, uh, next on the list is a 1920s style flat cap, kind of like the one that this guy is wearing. Now for this, I'm using a method rather than a pattern. And once I've tried it to see how it goes, I'll tell you more about that. And finally, from a dear old quick sew, this is pattern 3133. And I'm going to make not, not that, not that, um, this. A very, very simple shoulder bag. I've made one before from this pattern, and it was good. Now I want to make it again and make it better. So let's make our shopping list. For the bag, I need one yard of wool suiting, or maybe an upholstery fabric, and fusible interfacing, something pretty stiff. I already have a large piece of lining that I want to use, and this bag pattern doesn't require buckles or zippers or any other kind of hardware. For the cap, I need one yard of wool suiting and also some interfacing, not too much. Also non-stretchy woven band, about an inch wide, a yard or so of that, preferably in linen or cotton. I'm trying really hard to stick to natural fibers these days. And oh, I have to get a small piece of stiff leather for the inside of the brim. For the vest, I'm going to need two yards of wool suiting, a yard of fusible interfacing in the lighter medium weight, and two yards of lining fabric in silk or, well, I'll probably find rayon in a fun color or pattern. I love putting fun linings into my sewing because you never see them in ready-made menswear. I already have the buckle hardware and I'll choose buttons another day. You experienced tailors will raise your eyebrows at the yardage, but I'm erring on the side of overestimating because I'm a novice and I am prone to make mistakes, a lot of mistakes. And so really the extra fabric is, it's kind of like my insurance policy. Now that I have a list, I can go shopping. I'm taking the Chicago L from here on the north side to the loop, then changing to the pink line to Pilsen, the neighborhood where the fabric store is. So while I'm en route, let me tell you a bit about this fabric store. It's not a big box place. It's not part of the chain, but it's also not a beautifully arranged, gorgeously designed, smaller, independent fabric shop that's full of hipster prints and imported tantalons from Liberty. No, this place is, um, it's special. The official name is Textile Discount Outlet, but I don't know anyone who ever calls it that. Instead, most people that I know call it 2121 because the address is 2121 21st Street, an address that even I can remember. Now we change to the pink line here in the loop and train comes in. I hopped right on and was enjoying my ride and realized it was the wrong train. So I had to go back. 
and eventually did find my way to Pilsen. Pilsen is a really, really sweet neighborhood. Lots of interesting architecture and lots of charm, mostly working families. And you have the remains of the German culture that built the neighborhood mixed up with the Latin culture that now dominates the neighborhood. I really, really like it here. This is the old Lutheran church school building. And oh, here we are approaching the entrance. I can't believe that I'm back here. This is so exciting. Textile discount outlet at 21, 21 21st Street. Fabric fantasy land, and it, it really kind of is. When you come in the door, the first thing that you see here is the cutting table and also the what I think of as the Kardashian wall. Uh, but we're not going there first. Instead, we're going to my first stop always, the $1.95 bargain room. Everything in here is $1.95 a yard. And what I usually find is what I'm looking for here today, specifically linings. And look at this brilliant violet rayon lining. $1.95 a yard, yes. And then into what this room has a bit of everything. Uh, your cotton prints for quilting are here. Um, ecclesiastical fabrics, if you happen to be sewing for a church. Uh, fleeces in prints and ooh, ooh, shirtings, shirting, shirtings, you know? Um, I, oh, okay, never mind. You know, but while we're here, let's go upstairs. And this is where you really might be shocked by what you see. These enormous open rooms with so much fabric. This is the uh, part of the upholstery section in the big home deck room. And sometimes they're piled on shelves and sometimes they're on these enormous metal poles that go almost all the way up to the ceiling. And then you have in between the racks and shelves, piles and piles on carts and in boxes. And it may seem bewildering, but you can always ask the staff for help. Somehow, they always know what's where. Oh, this is a pretty sprig print. It's an outdoor fabric that maybe I could do. No, 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 no. I am up here on the second floor for leather for the cat brim. I just need a little bit, and 2121 has uh, two full aisles of just leather on the shelves, and then the boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of scrap. Just for the fun of it, going to stop in the trims department. I don't need any trims, but tassels fascinate me. I find myself looking at tassels, and somehow they cause me to fantasize about living a different lifestyle than I lead. Something uh, louche and voluptuous and you know, every surface in my home that protrudes would have a tassel hanging from it. Oh, ditto with all the silk cords and the various varieties. I, I just have nice uh, chased wooden blinds in my house, so I don't really need them. So let's check out the next aisle and ooh, lace. How much lace would you like? Because there's wide lace and narrow lace, lace in colors, white lace, lace in different styles, insertions, edgings, thousands and thousands of miles of lace. A whole army of brides could be outfitted right here in this very room. One last stop, which is in the room that serves primarily two audiences, prom queens and drag queens. The fabrics in here will absolutely just knock your eyes right out of your head. And I love them in the sense that I find them fascinating, even though I have no idea what I would do with them. In the checkout line, you can pick up feather boas as an impulse purchase or more Kardashian fabric. And while I was here, one of the staff was doing a FaceTime consult with a Detroit stripper for her latest outfit. That was a really, really, really good trip.
I enjoyed that thoroughly, and now it's time to go home. By the way, notice how close we live in Chicago to the L tracks. Um, from my feet to the edge of the platform, to the tracks, to the safety railing, and then boom, somebody's really, really, really impressive garden and lovely painted back of the house, too. I love Pilsen. There's the Sears Tower. It has another name now, but we still call it the Sears Tower. And the train home, the correct train this time, I'm happy to say. So, what did I get? Let's take a look. So, we got in here, first of all, interfacing. Lots and lots and lots of interfacing. This is a uh, somewhat stiffer, somewhat heavier weight interfacing that I plan to use for, uh, for the bag to give it a little bit more substance. Don't want a drapey bag. So there's that. And next we have, let's see here. Ah, yes. The other interfacing. This is the interfacing that I'll be using for the vest and for the cap. It's much softer and much suppler, and I, uh, yeah, so that's why I got this. And let's see, and then we have, ah, of course, the lining, all rayon. Nothing particularly special about it except it was a buck ninety-five, so I like that. And then, ah, yes, leather. Fairly stiff leather, uh, fairly thick leather that I plan to use um, inside the brim of the cap that I'll be making. Not 100% sure this is exactly the leather that is wanted, um, but worth a shot. And I chose it with the assistance of a sales associate who knows more than I do about working with leather in pieces of sewing. But what I know is nothing. So that's part of this adventure for me. The, the color is... Um, I find it unpleasant, but you won't see the color, so that wasn't a factor in my choice. And then, ah, yes, 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 we have. Now, this is also something that one of the assistants helped me out with. I need um, a band or tape of some kind to put inside the cap, and the source that I'm working with calls for uh, linen tape about three quarters of an inch wide and you know trying to find linen tape It's tricky and then when you do find it sometimes it's wildly expensive So in order to not break the bank, I, I talked to somebody who was there. I did ask if they had exactly that linen tape um, and they pointed me towards this which they call rat tail and they had a lot of different pieces of it and it appears to be made of cotton, and um, it's the right width, and it does not stretch. And that seems good enough for me. So I took their recommendation, and we will see how it goes. And also, rather than costing me, you know, like $3 a yard or something, this costs something like 40 cents. So we like that too. And then, ah, the fabrics. Yeah, I've been trying to save those for last. So first of all, um, we have the bag fabric, and the bag fabric is um, an all-wool men's suiting, or excuse me, I'm trying not to say things like that anymore. It's a wool suiting. Anybody can wear it. So, um, And uh, I, I like it. It uh, does not have stripes, and it just has very, 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 very tiny, uh, I think it's pretty much a puppy tooth check pattern that's going on here. It's like hound's tooth, but smaller. And I, I like the color too. There's just a little bit of a hint of blue in it that makes me especially happy. So lovely, lovely, and uh, supple, nice to touch, nice to look at, and I feel like it's gonna go with everything that I own. So, so that's good. We will. Definitely use that. And then finally, we have here uh, two yards of fabric to be used for the vest and for the cap. And this is also a wool suiting. It is um, a somewhat different weight 
from the weight I'm using for the back. That's the other thing I, I didn't mention. So this is a bit heftier, this is a bit lighter and drapier. And I, I like that idea because I like to layer my vests and I wear them in all weathers and I like the idea of uh, something a little lighter for wearing in warmer weather or in warmer rooms. And this also has a tiny, tiny, tiny little, little woven in check pattern. And it's a bit of blue and it's a bit of gray. Um, I obviously didn't go wild with colors or patterns or anything like that, but on this particular trip to the shop, uh, there was nothing like that to be had. Uh, there wasn't anything really wild in the suiting section. And while I did think about maybe trying an upholstery fabric, as I mentioned, um, in the end, I decided, no, this is the look that I want. It may not be the most exciting on the block, but it's what I want. If I keep this quiet, then when I put an outfit together, uh, you know, if my bag's not screaming, look at me, look at me, look at me, then you know, I can wear something that does, like a really, really good bow tie or, uh, and or um, one of my pocket watches with a, a really cool fob on it or something like that. So that's my dream, anyhow. Uh, I'm already seeing myself dressed in these things, and as you will notice, I have not actually made anything yet. So that's everything that I got, and I am not going to be horrible and vulgar and, and talk to you about uh, prices, but you may be curious about what all this cost. And here's what I will tell you. All of this, well under $40. So I feel like that was a trip well made. So now there is the sewing to get on with, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to use my old machines as much as I possibly can. Thanks for coming along with me on my exciting trip into the outside world today. Wherever you are, I hope you're being safe and careful and smart and cautious and all those good things. But I hope that we can all, all, all uh, start to get back to normal and shopping for the things that we love in person soon. Uh, until I see you next time. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to know about future episodes. Click like or leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts. And if you really, really liked what you saw, check out my Patreon campaign, where my patrons enjoy exclusive access to downloads, live streams, and other bonus material every week.